my line of work. Are you asking me what my line of work is as a wife or as a, <laughs> as a mother? No. I have so many lines of work. I'm a jack of all trades. I have many professions. But I'll say that I'm the co-owner of Enfuego Entertainment. I'm the president of Evolution Partners, which is an insurance membership organization that helps put together insurance agents with the commercial insurance carriers. I'm also a hypnotherapist. Who would know? What is my best attribute? I think my rear end. <laughs> oh, you weren't talking about my body part? <laughs> no, uh, let's see. My best attribute is I'm a multitasker. I am a major uh, planner and uh, problem solver. And I'm, uh, boy, gosh, I'll, I'll stop with that. Why do I wish people would stop asking me? You know what I would really wish people would stop asking me is I swear I get 15 text messages a day to donate money and it's driving me crazy because I already donate money. And I wish they would notate that I've donated money and then, you know, take me off the list. So that's like my biggest pet peeve right now is people asking for money. Boy, I am so completely over and done with that. That was just like the wrong question to ask because I'm so over with politics. I am so over with racism and people dividing other people. I'm so over the negativity that's going on in our world. I just want peace. I want calm. I want to not think about politics. I don't want to think about our, our government right now. I just cannot wait for that time where we can just like live our lives like we used to. What is the worst and the best thing about being female? The worst thing is hormones. As you get older, it sucks. It's crazy because when I was younger, I never had that PMS situation going on. And so I always bragged about that. But as you get older, the hormone situation is just crazy. Even though my husband does go through some like hormone changes. So it might not only be female. But being female, I like. I like being feminine. And I'm going to go back to being a multitasker. Because I think women are just multitasker. Taskers. People always ask me that question, who has been the biggest impact of my life? And I have to say, this is not going to be a generic answer because I think that life is what is the influencer in your life, life experience. From a very young age, I, I was around motivational thinkers and entrepreneurs, and that kind of shaped my, my life in those beginning years. But if you have to ask me, like, who... I still can't narrow it down to one person, but I think I'll narrow it down to two that have been in my life my whole life. And the first one, I'll say my dad. My dad taught me that don't ever do anything half-ass. He taught me to always be on time. And he was a great athlete. So by him being a great athlete, I was an athlete. He was like my coach. So he was such a great influence in that way. And the second person, which is kind of the flip side of him, is his brother, my Uncle Hugo. He, they were like opposites. He was the entrepreneur. He was the world traveler. He just was just this wealth of knowledge. And I, grav I gravitated to him. So I had like the yin and yang growing up. And I really believe that those two men were a big influence in my life. What is my biggest challenge in life in general? Boy, right now during this pandemic, I've never experienced a challenge like this before where I cannot travel. I'm always traveling. That is the reason why I work. It's just been the thing that I do. I travel the world since I was really young. I cannot travel and it's driving me crazy, but even more so the biggest challenge associated with that is not being able to see my daughter. 
she lives on the other side of the world and I can't travel to go see her. So it's definitely challenging me to be patient. <laughs> definitely. Uh, you added a question that is not on the list. <laughs> What do I do? What do I do to keep myself patient? I do a lot of meditation. I do a lot of hypnosis. I do a lot of visualization. I do a lot of breathing. I listen to my very calm husband. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just keep busy, which I'm always busy anyway. So I just restart every day. New, every day is a new day. And uh, definitely a learning experience for me. <laughs> Especially now, the biggest lesson that life has taught me, even though you're learning lessons all throughout life, like I mentioned earlier, life experience, every little thing teaches you about life. But right now is uh, that you can't change other people. <laughs> yeah, that's it. The best word that describes me is persistent. I do not give up. So I'll use the word persistent. What word best describes the world at this time? Wow. I'm going to use the word changing, which is a good thing. Right now it doesn't feel so good, but changing. Yeah. I completely see an optimistic picture of this country and you know why because of our young people the young adults I get so inspired when I see how smart and intelligent and and out of the box thinking and the young people today want change and I just feel so good when I know when I watch just so many of these young adults taking action for change so I'm very hopeful for the future Absolutely. So when I hear the word in fuego, I think I am in fuego because I am in fuego. We are part of in fuego. But what that means to me is on fire. And being on fire is really important when you want to accomplish anything in life, whether it's personal, whether it's internal, whether it's dealing with people. You need to be on fire because you need to deep, you go deep down within yourself and find out what motivates you and what makes you passionate and being yourself. So you need to take charge, be on fire, and do what is right for you. Be you.